Hi, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Today is production day on the kit of the week and that kit is, if you don't know already, the 172nd scale Vault F4U Corsair from Revel. Now, if you've already got one of these burning a hole in your stash and you want to make it, then this is the video for you. If you're thinking about getting one, you just want to know what comes with it, uh, what the options are and things like that, then there is a box opening companion video already on my site. Please have a look at that as well as having a look at how you then go about building it. So if you like the show, and I hope you do, please remember, thumbs up on the button down there. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel through the small logo down there in the bottom right corner. Doesn't cost you anything, helps me enormously. What also helps me is if you feel inclined to make a more concrete uh, contribution to the channel, and you can do that through any of my partner programs or indeed through Super Thanks. So let's get on then without any more delay and have a look at how to build the 172nd scale kit of the Vought F4U Corsair fighter from Revel. Here we have the rudder bar assembly and it is going into this part here which is like the front of the cockpit or the back firewall of the engine compartment depending on your point of view. It fits in very nicely so just a little drop of cement at the bottom we'll leak through to everything and that's fine we'll leave that to dry the next part off is this gun sight here um, as you can see it's quite quite badly molded um, to various sprues and stuff like that so i'll take a bit of time with a very very sharp craft knife and see if we can separate that in one piece We've got the uh, gun sight off the sprue. You can see it's got a little peg. There's a little hole there. Peg sits in the hole like so. And again, a spot of glue. This time I'll do the glue from the back here so it can't be seen. It's not going to interfere with anything else. Now there's bits where the instructions are not terribly clear or the parts aren't terribly well molded. Anyway, on this back wall, this bit definitely goes on here at the bottom. And it is in turn supporting this piece. Which is itself supporting the chair pilot seat then underneath all of that there's a hole this support goes in it and that is where the control column sits we'll let all this dry and then we'll give all the relevant bits a paint looking at the plastic while I'm here the there are bits that are quite got quite bad flash on them. You know, I'm cleaning this up, and this this line here really shouldn't be that like that. Um, but the the detail is very fine. Uh, Moulding detail is very fine. If you look at these rivet lines along that joint there, if you can see them. Um, inside the cockpit, there's almost nothing. Inside the tail wheel area. There's all these ribs and stringers um, because there's a gaping hole here, so you can see quite a lot inside there, I guess. It seems reasonably sharply um, molded. It's not bad, but it's the, the molds are just getting a bit old, so you do have to go around and clear up a few bits and pieces. I'll give some interior green to the cockpit area. And some dark blue goes into the inside of the tail wheel well. I'm going to put the 
instrument decals on now on the instrument panel and places like that. you'll notice here there is a, a bit that's there on the decal for the gun sight now most decals there's a, a the printed edge but there's a tiny bit of the decal sort of sticks out it's really difficult to see most of the time it's not an issue but in cutouts like this it is an issue because it doesn't leave enough space for the actual gun sight so just with a very sharp knife just cut out the blank bit there then the decal will fit around the gun sight properly so when we come to put the decal on it should just slide up either side of the gun sight properly then we can just edge it into place like that happy days and there are these decals for the straps which kind of dangle down they're okay I mean you know save some to make make a set with the lap strap what you really want to be doing is getting the middle correct first and then worry about the sides okay so let's try and get the Get, get it from this side because it's easier for me. Come on. There we go. Okay, right. So we need to get the the straps roughly the crossover roughly in the middle. This is going to take a little bit of um, messing around to do this. See when the straps are roughly in the middle like that. Maybe a little further back. What you can do is just hold them. This is like surgery for God's sake. It's only making a model aeroplane. Here we go, and just shove the straps into the corners. Should actually just pop over the edge here. And um, sort of get on the other side. What I'm going to do is get the decal set on that as it is let it dry for a bit and then sort of tease these edges round a bit again yeah, I'm not going to see this ever again but we kind of do it I guess we do it because it's there it's completion you may maybe feel that the achievement I don't know Anyway, I'm going to stop fiddling now. I'm going to leave those alone for the moment. And then when I can, I'll just sort of round them over the edge like that. On each side of the fuselage, there's an instrument panel, which I painted black, and there's a decal that goes on each one as well. So just put it into place and a dab of glue. The rear wall goes into a, a slot at the back of the cockpit area here like so and on the other side the bulkhead fits against this tab like so now it's not going to sit there by itself for long because I'm going to put the other side in then we can jiggle from underneath here to get them lined up properly but for now put it in and we'll join the fuselage halves together and then that should be we should be able to then set it in place properly so we now we connect the two halves of the fuselage remember we 
pretty much have to do all of this at the back because the front end is relatively open at the moment anyway. That's all of those, all of those, all of those. And now you can, now you can see here, this, this front piece is, is not quite connected. So what we'll do is just bring that forward with some tweezers. So that sits there. Then now that sits exactly where it should. That sits where it should. That sits up there. Everything's happy. So we'll tape up this tail part and we will get that glued up with some extra thin. The nose of the aircraft is spaced with this ring at the front here. And what I'm going to do is just put a piece of tape across that just to keep it in place and keep these sides tensioned against it. Now the wings, there's a full width center, uh, lower section and then the upper sections clip in. Like so. I'll um, clamp those up and seal everything with extra thin cement. While all of those are drying, I'll do things like paint the uh, engine back plate here. I've done the cylinders with iron and I'll just do the back plate itself in black. This is barely going to be visible, but just in case we do it. While that's drying, I'll also put the radiator inlets in here as well. They just sort of sit there. We'll tidy that up a bit before we glue it in place. In the leading edge of the wings goes this little panel for the three 50 cal machine guns. While I'm at it, I'm going to add the wing tips specific to this aircraft. As I said, the uh, other marks, this is much more rounded. It's got a tiny bit of the, the round cut off. But the other half of the rudder needs to go in as well. I'm not entirely sure why they did it this way, but I'm sure there's a very, very good reason for it. It looks all right. Maybe when they tested it, moulding it on both sides and then trying to get the fit right wasn't an option. I don't know. Anyway, let's clamp that together for a little bit until that sets. And when that's nice and dry, the rudder can go into place. All right, oddity number one, right? The, the tail planes, there's two obviously halves of the tail plane which are identical. They've got the same part number. F35? F38. F38. They're both F38. They're identical. But on the aeroplane, they're going to be opposite each other like this. This one is plainly the, the lower surface, and this one's the upper surface. There's a little actuator here for the trim tab. I don't believe they had asymmetrically designed tails. I think this should be a mirror of this, not an identical one, and it should be different part numbers. It's on the sprue. They're both F38 on the sprue. They're both F38 on the instructions. F38, F38. I can see they're both supposed to have these little tab actuators, but they don't. So I don't know what to do about that, apart from just put them in and I've done with it. There they are, and with our bizarrely asymmetric tail. I'm really not convinced by that at all. I can also now put the wing into the fuselage. Like so. 
and I'll start I'll get some elastic bands and other bits and pieces and I've just run a piece of masking tape over here just to pull the wings up into the correct dihedral and I've run some glue down either side some thin glue either side that will sort of lock the wings in place because I'm going to leave it overnight and I'll come back in the morning Right, today we're starting with the engine and there's a drive shaft, prop shaft that goes through from the back of the front cylinder. And there's this little notch here which lines up with a notch on the front of the rear cylinder bank like that. You can see how the cylinders are offset. Then the whole thing sits on this ring of fins now I'm having all the fins open because I just like them that way you can have the fins uh, closed down as well then the whole assembly can sit on the front of the aircraft like this and then we just need to build uh, an engine cover around here the engine cover is in two sections like this they simply join together Then the whole thing goes on the front of the aircraft. Like this, then we're going to leave this to set for a little while. There is a, a ring <coughs> that goes out the, on the front here, an aerodynamic ring that goes on the front, but I'm not putting that on because that's going to be painted a different colour. So I want it it's going to be painted yellow I think so it's going to be left alone for a while and we'll put it on later on next is a piece on the top of the um, engine and fuselage area fuel tanks I guess are in here and that's slots in here I found I had to mess around with this a little bit to get it to sit absolutely right but it will go in eventually just needs a bit of fiddling around I'm going to put the canopy in now. I'll put the front in first. I've masked it off with some tape and I am using um, some <coughs> some clear canopy glue. I uh, don't remember which one this is. I think it's the Revel one from memory. Um, these canopy glues, essentially they're just like a, a clear PVA they're dry, transparent, and they also fill the gaps a little bit. If there's any gaps, they help fill them in unobtrusively and without fuss. So we pop the rear screen, the hood in here. There we go, and that sits there. There we go. Now with PVO we have to leave it for a little while to sit down so I'll go and make myself a cup of coffee. I'll just add some uh, bit of primer now. It's all the bits I've added and just to double check some of these panel lines and double check the filling that's gone on. And I'll just give that a decent amount of primer. Right, I'm going to be doing a bit of, sort of chipping and weathering so what I'm going to do first is put some aluminium down in the bits where I'm likely to want the chipping to be. I'm also going to spray the propeller with aluminium first as well because we'll do some chipping from the black covering of the propeller. So first of all, I'm going to spray this uh, nose band, this aerodynamic housing for the front of the engine compartment in yellow. And then we spray the top colour on top. Obviously, that's where a top colour belongs. Right, 
and I'll spray the propeller black. And when you've done a bit of um, muddying up and chipping and all the rest of it, you can start putting the rest of the plane together. Such as with this aerodynamic cowl at the front of the aircraft. As usual with decals, a good coat of decal fix or microsol, whichever you use. This one is going to need a bit of work because the decal's broken. So we're going to have to match it up in a moment. But we'll get the bulk of this done first. Then we can match up the other half fairly simply. There we go. And we've got to paint the tires as well. The hubs I've already sprayed with this dark blue. And we need to put the other side of the hub into the other side of the wheel. Like that. Now I can put the wheel onto the leg. It's quite a firm fit, which is a very good thing. So this rear leg is a bit fiddly. It's got to go into a space here. It needs to twist around. A bit like the gear itself, really. It's very fiddly. There you go. It sits in against the back there. That's that. Then, then the wheel goes in here. There's a hole at the front for it to go on, and it's, it has to sit on this step like that, and in the hole at the front. That goes there, that goes there, that goes there, and that's it. But a tail wheel, there's a spot in there where there's a, a, a kind of a ledge with a hole in it. So the front of the gear goes into the front of the bay, and then behind here, there's a little that goes down into the hole. So it sits like that. Okay, so the front part is at the back of the well the front of the opening actually and inside there's a a kind of like a, a table a little sort of flat tab with a hole in it and that's where the the other link goes in the doors for the rear undercarriage go on here So the bay door, the bump, the wheel bay doors have got tabs. They sit inside little slots on the wall of the wheel well, like that. Then the front wheel door just slots in here. Like and pop the propeller on. And it's done. So there it is, the Revel F4U Corsair in 172nd. I think it's not a bad little kit at all. It all went together reasonably well. There were very few fit issues at all. The undercarriage is a little fiddly, but not impossible by any means. And I think it makes a decent enough representation of the aircraft. I've used aftermarket decals because I wanted to use the Pacific colours because I really, really, really like them. The original decals are a little bit thicker, a little bit papery, but 
you know, easier to handle. For a starter set, for a gift set, I think it's an excellent little plane and I hope plenty of people build it. There we go, what a nice little kit. Uh, plastic's nice, the moulding's generally speaking are nice. There's a bit of flash here and there. It is a 2011, 2011 or 2014. There we go then, quite a nice kit. Uh, a few flash issues here and there and some of the sprue design is a bit um, creative, let's say, and the numbering system is just bonkers. Other than that, do you know what? It's a nice kit to make. I enjoyed making it and I think it looks pretty good in the end. So, if you enjoyed the show as much as I have making it, then please do. That sounds a bit awful. There we go then, what a nice little kit to make. It was fun to do. There's a few things that are a little annoying. There's uh, the, the sprue design is a bit creative at times. There's a bit of flash here and there, but generally speaking, nothing that can't be overcome with a bit of time and patience. Um, yeah, I'd recommend it, especially if they if uh, the stores, you know, come Black Friday, you're knocking around a store and it's there and you're thinking, should I, shouldn't I? Well, I'd say, yeah, you should. It's, it's a lovely little kit. Not too old, so the uh, design of the kit itself is still quite good and uh, lovely to put together. So if you've enjoyed the show as much as I've enjoyed making it, which I hope you have, then please do remember, like it with a thumbs up down there and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It helps me enormously, it doesn't cost you a penny. In any case, thank you so much for joining me on this build and I hope to see you again next time. <music>